from our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to Palo Alto's CUBE Studios for CUBE Conversation. I'm John Furrier, co-host of the CUBE. We are Kevin Ackeroy, CEO of CISN. CUBE alumni has been on before. Uh, building one of the most compelling companies that's disrupting and changing the game in comms, advertising, PR, with cloud technologies. Kevin, great to see you again, thanks for coming in. Likewise, John, it's really good to be back. So we haven't chatted in two years, you've been busy. Um, our last conversation was the beginning of 2017. Um, Sisson's done a lot of interesting things. You got a lot of M&A under your belt. You're yes. putting this, this portfolio together with cloud technologies. Um, really been interesting, I really got to say, I think you cracked the code on, uh, I think a new reality, new, a new economic reality, and also new capabilities for comms folks. So yep. congratulations. Thank you. It's been a fun ride. So give us the update. So two years since we talked, how many deals, <laughs> deals companies have you bought? What's the head count? What's Boy, the revenue? Give us an update. To, in the four years, 12, 12 acquisitions seven of which have happened since I've been here, uh, up to 4,500 employees in over 40 countries. Customer count has grown to over 50,000 customers globally. Um, revenue has kind of gone from 500s to uh, just shy of 800 million. So a uh, lot of leadership changes and, um, and as you just mentioned, pretty seismic change, finally. Um, we've certainly been the catalyst and the cattle prod for that seismic change around tech data measurement and analytics finally becoming mature and adopted inside this line of business, like the chief communication officer, the earned media folks, that to, be, be, to say that they were not tech savvy a few years ago would uh, be an understatement. So a lot's been going on. Yeah, and, and certainly the trend is your friend, at least in my opinion for you, but I think the reality is not yet upon people's general mindset and, and it's, com it's coming quickly. So if you look at some of the big trends out there, look at fake news, yep. look at Facebook, look at the Google effect, Elizabeth Warren wants to break up big tech, Amazon, cloud computing has, you know, in that time period that you were prior to going to CISN, you were at Oracle Cloud, you've done a lot of great mm -hmm. things on the marketing cloud side, but the timing of cloud computing, the timing of how media has changed. Yeah. There's not many journalists anymore. Right. We had Andy Cunningham, a legendary uh, industry veteran, formerly of Cunningham Communications. She did the PR for Steve Jobs. She said, there's no more journalists, a few left, but you got to tell your story direct to the consumer. Yeah. This is now a new marketing phenomenon. This is a tailwind for you at CISN because you guys, although put these companies together, have a unique vision around bringing brand value advertising at PR economics. Yeah. Um, what so is a good way to put it. Tell us the vision of CISN and, and specifically the shift that's happening. Why are you guys important? What yeah. wave are you riding? So there, there are a couple shifts, John, and, and you, you and I have talked about this in previous programs. There's this shift of the line of business having to work in a whole bunch of non-integrated point solutions. Right, the CFO used to live in 17 different applications from 17 vendors. That's all squished together, now I buy from one cloud platform, right, from Oracle or SAP. Same thing happened in human capital management, 22 things squished into a cloud, one from Workday, right? Same thing happened, you had 25 different things for sales and service. That all squished together into one CRM in the cloud, I buy from Salesforce, right? And our last rodeo, right, early part of this deck, it was me and uh, Adobe, battling it out for the right to go squish the entire you know, Lumascape into a marketing cloud, right? So there could be one ring to rule them all for the CMO, right? So it happens in every single category. Um, it just hasn't had over here, happened in the earned media side and in, in the chief communications officer. So bringing the tech stack so that now we are for the CCO, what Adobe is for the CMO, what Salesforce is for the CRO, what Workday is for the CHRO, right? That has to happen, right? You can't do, you can't manage it this way without sophisticated tech, without automation, without integration, right? You can't do it. The second thing that had to happen is, especially in marketing and advertising, they all figured out how to, uh, how to get uh, revenue credit, right? Advertising was a slow single digit CAGR uh, industry for 50 years. Yeah. And then something happened, after 5% CAGR for 50 years, and then something happened over the next 10 years, digital paid went link from like 15 billion to 150 billion. And what happened is uh, that old, uh, I know half my advertising is wasted, I don't know what half. That went bye bye. Now I know immediately <laughs> down to the page, down to the ad unit, down to this, exactly what worked, right? When I was able to put pixels in ads, John, you'd go to that page, pixel would go on you, it would follow you around, and if you ended up putting something in an e commerce shop, that ad got credit. 
I'm not saying that's right, I'm just saying that's how the entire... Yeah, but, that, but that's how the infrastructure would have let you, allowed you, to enabled you to do exactly that. Right. And again, paid, paid advertising, paid search, paid advertising, that yep. thing has created massive value in South Massive there. value, and, but my buyer, right, so the person that does the little ad on the Wall Street Journal tech page got credit. My buyer, my buyer that got uh, Bob Evans, the cloud king, to write an article about why Microsoft is going to beat uh, AWS, he's a credible third-party influencer, right? Rating objectively, that article's worth triple platinum and has more credibility than 20,000 Microsoft sales reps, right? We've never, until Cision, well, let's pixel that, let's go figure out how many of those are the target audience, let's ride that all the way down to the lead form of the target environment, and basically, it's, it's super simple. Nobody's ever tracked the press releases, the articles, or any of the earned media content the way people have tracked banner ads or e-commerce emails. And therefore, this line of business never got revenue credit. And it stayed over here on the OpEx pile, where things like commerce and advertising yeah. got dumped onto the revenue pile. And voila, you saw, you saw the, uh, the crazy investment shift. So that's really the more important one, is comms is finally getting quantified ROI and business was attribution like their commerce and advertising peers for the first time ever in 2018 via what Citizens rolled out. So that, that's the exciting piece. I think, I mean, I guess, I, what, what I hear you saying is, is that for the first time, the PR actually can be measured, you similar to how advertising you couldn't be measured, then be measured. Now PR or communications yep. um, is, can be measured. Okay, they so get, that, They get measured the same way. And then one other thing, you know, that ad, that press release, down to a business event, right? This one had $2 million of ad spend. This one had no ad spend, yeah. right? And then when it goes to convert in CRM or it goes to convert on a website, this one came from banner ad. This one came from credible third-party content. Guess which one, not only did it have zero ad spend instead of $2 million in ad spend, guess which one from which source actually converts better? It's yeah. the guy that chose to read credible third-party article. He's going to yeah. convert in the marketing system way better than somebody that just clicked on the Well, app. certainly I'm biased. So all the way down the funnel, we're talking about real financial impact yeah. based on capturing earned media ID, which is pretty exciting. Well, I think the, the more exciting thing is that you're basically taking a value that is unfunded, quote, by the advertising right. firm, has no budget, basically, yep. um, or thin budgets, yeah. trying to hit an organic, credible outlet, which is converting in a progression to a, a buyer or an outcome. Yeah. That progression is, is now tracked. But let's just talk about that economics mm. because you're talking about two million in spend, it could be 20 million. Yeah. The ratio between ad spend and conversion to this new element you mentioned is different. Very. So you're essentially talking about the big mega trend which is organic That's right. content. Yep. Meaning connecting to sources. That's right. That flow, of course, we believe yeah. and we do the queue. Everyone's been seeing that with our business. But you, so let's talk about that dynamic because this is not a funded, operationalized piece yet. So we've been seeing in the industry PR be, and comms becoming more powerful. So the yes. chief communication officer isn't just rolling out press releases, although they have to do that to communicate. Right. You got medium posts now. Yeah, you got right. multiple channels. Yeah, a lot of places to put the story. So the chief communication officer really is the chief storyteller officer not necessarily the CMO, becomes a MarTech stack right. kind of tracking. Yeah, so talk right. about that dynamic. How is the chief communication officer role change or changing? Why is that important and what should people be thinking about if they are a chief communication officer? You know, it's interesting. There's a, I'm just going to call it an app, an actual contradiction on this front. Uh, when, I, when you and I were getting out of undergrad, seven out of 10 times that C CCO, the chief communication officer, worked for the CEO and 30% of the time other, um, yet the role was materially narrower. Um, the role has exploded, you just said it pretty eloquently, this role has really exploded and widened its aperture. Right now though, seven out of 10 of them actually do work for the CMO, <laughs> uh, which is a pretty interesting contradiction. Um, and then only 30% of them work for the CEO. So, But despite the fact that from an organizational standpoint, that kind of counterintuitive org move has been made, it doesn't really matter because so much of what you just said too was in marketing's preview around brand or around reputation or around telling the story or around even owning right the key assets. Key assets isn't that beautiful Budweiser Frog commercial that played on the Super Bowl anymore. The key assets are what's getting done over here in the communications <laughs> right part. So from a from from a storytelling standpoint, from an ownership of the narrative, right, from a not just a product or a service or promotion but the whole company, the whole grand brand, the yeah. reputation, the goodwill, all of that is comms, yeah. <laughs> right? And therefore, you're seeing comms take the widest 
uh, amount of real estate around the boardroom table than they ever had despite the fact that they don't sit in the chair as much. And I, I mention that just because I, I find it's very interesting because comms has never been more empowered, never had a wider aperture. Um, but budget-wise, they're not really that they don't loaded get funded. up with, with yeah. funding. And, and to my earlier point, it's because they couldn't show, right? Super strategic. So showing ROI showing is Showing ROI is Not the like, qualitative clippings. It was the Maslow hierarchy of needs. If you can just show me that I put a quarter in and I got a dollar out, like the ads and the e-commerce folks do, it simply drives the behavior. All right, so take us through some of those analytics because I think you know, yeah. people who know about comms, the old school comms would be, if people are doing this, they should really be thinking about what their operation is because can I get an article in the Wall Street Journal? Can Silicon Angle write about us? I got to get more clippings yeah. since that, that yeah. tend to be the thing. Did we get the press release out on yeah. time? They're not really tied into some of the key marketing mix pieces. They tend to be kind of a narrow scope yeah. Those metrics were pretty we, clear. Yeah. What are the new metrics? What's the new operational playbook? We, uh, yeah, we call those vanity metrics. I cared about theoretical reach. You know, hey, Yahoo tells me I reached 222 billion people, so I plug in 220 billion people, right? I, I reached more people than they're on the planet <laughs> with this PR campaign. Um, uh, needed to get the basic stuff like how many people did I actually reach, right? Number one, um, but they don't, they're theoretical reach. They work in things like sentiment. Well, I'm going to come up with 100 reporters wrote about me. I'm going to come up with how many of them I thought were positive, negative, right, neutral. Sentiment analysis. They measure a number of reporters or hits versus their competitors and say, hey, we rolled out, Procter & Gamble rolled out this diaper product. Well, how did, how did I do this five days? How, many, how much did Procter & Gamble diapers get written about versus Kraft diapers versus Unilever's? And, share a voice and, you know, not, not irrelevant metrics, but not metrics that the CEO and the CFO are going to invest in, right? Conversion um, to brand or sales, those kinds those, of things. Those th that never existed. No, those never existed. Now, when we can introduce the same exact metrics that the commerce and the ad folks do, and say, I can tell you exactly how many people, right? I can tell you exactly who they were, demographic, firmographic, right? lifestyle, you name it, I can tell you exactly who the audience is you're rich in. I can tell you exactly what they do, right? When those kind of people read those kind of articles or those kind of people read those kind of press releases, they go to these destinations, they take these behaviors, right? And because I can track that all the way down to whatever that success metric is, which could be a, a lead form if I'm B2B for Pipe, could be an e-commerce store if I'm a B2C, could be a, a rating and review at a user generation content, you know, Gord, it could be a sign up and register if I'm trying to get you know database names, whatever the business metric is. Um, that's what the commerce and the ad people do all day, every day, and that's why they are more funded than ever. The fact that uh, press releases, articles, yeah. right, tweets, uh, blogs, the fact that the earned media stuff has never been able to do those things is why they just continue to suffer and uh, have had a real lack of investment prices going on for the last 20 years. Talk about the trend so it's around. It's simple stuff. Yeah, no, I know. It's, it's if you improve the ROI, you get more budget. And that's that's been, that's it really been, is that simple. That's been the channel. And I think PR certainly become, and comms is becoming more powerful. Mm -hmm. People know I, I talk about this all the time. I think comms is the new CMO. Yep. I think command and control and organic content work and work together in the organic. We've seen it firsthand in our business. But, but it's an issue of tech savviness and also yep. um, vision, right? A lot of people just are uncomfortable shifting to the new realities. That's for sure. What are some of the, uh, the tech savvy people look at when they look at, say, revamping a comms platform yeah. or strategy versus, say, old, old school? Folks? Yeah, I'll, say, I'll, I'll give you two answers on that, John. Um, <clears throat> here's one thing that is good for us that seven out of 10 of these CCOs work for the CMO because when I was, at, when I was in this seat, starting to light that fire under the CMO for the first time, which was not that long ago. And they were not tech savvy and they were not sophisticated, and, right? They didn't know how to do this stuff either, right? And that was a good 10 year journey to get the CMO from not sophisticated <laughs> to very sophisticated, right? And now they're one of the more sophisticated lines of business in the world. But that was a slog. Um, so we're going to see a Comstack, like Martech, Comtech? Comtech is the decision communication cloud is Comtech, right? So we did it, we've, we've built the cloud stack uh, again, like I said, just like Adobe has the tech stack for marketing, Cision has the tech stack for comms. Um, we've le replicated that. But because the CCO works for the CMO, and the CMO's already been through this, yeah. right? Been through this with ad tech, been through this with martech, been through this with e-commerce, been through this with web. You know, I've got a three or four year uh, sophistication path this time, just because the learnings uh, are there. They already, the company's already done it everywhere else, the boss has already done it everywhere so else. So the learnings are there, there from the martech 
They can, so it's a pretty can, easy leap to take. That's exactly right. It's and just how Comtex works is shocking. Yeah. Incredibly similar to how MarTech and AdTech work, right? A lot of it is the same technology is being applied different. So the, the, that's good news the, the, the adoption people. curve for us is a fantastic thing and it's a really good thing for us that 70% uh, of more for CMO because CMO is the, le is the most impatient person on the planet yeah. to get this over because the CMO is sick of doing customer journeys or omni-channel yeah. across just paid and owned. They really, they recognize that the most influ influential thing to influence you, it's not their emails, yeah. it's not their push notifications, it's not their ads. It's recognizing which credible third party content you read, yeah. getting them into that so that they're influencing it's you. Kind of like Google Page Rank in the old days. This source exactly. is more relevant than that one, give it and, more weight. And now all of a sudden, if via my decision ID, I can plug in the more weight stuff into your profile. I'm, I, I one, let them go across paid and known, and two, yeah. I materially improve the performance of the paid and known yeah. because I'm putting in the really important signal versus what's sitting over there in the DMP or the CDP, which is kind of garbage. So I really think that's, re that's really important. I think you got a home run here. I think you really cracked the code on this. I think you are absolutely right on the money with comms and comm stack. I see it all the time in my years of experience. It's so obvious. It, and again, the tailwind is that yeah. they've been through with the MarTech. The question I have for you is cultural shift. Yeah. Um, that's a big one. And so I'm out evangelizing all the time about the cube cloud and some of the things we're doing. Yep. And I run into the deer in the headlights on one side. What do you mean? And then people oh, are like, yeah. I believe, I totally understand. The believers and the non-believers. Yeah. What's the cultural shift? Because some comms, uh, chief comm, they're very savvy, progressive. We got to yeah. make the shift. Yeah. How do they get the ship to turn? What are some of the cultural challenges? Yeah, and boy, is that right. I, I felt the same thing again when we were doing it with CMO. Uh, a lot of people kept their head in the sand until they got obsoleted, <laughs> right? They, they couldn't, they didn't, not only could they not see the train coming, they didn't want to see the train coming. And now you go look at the top 100 CMOs in the world today, pretty different bunch than who those top 100 CMOs were 10 years ago, right? Really different bunch. And history's repeating itself over here too. You've got the extremely innovative uh, CCOs that are driving change and transformation. You've got the deer in the headlight. Okay, I know I need to do this, but I'm not sure how. And you do have your typical, you know, nope, I've got my do not disturb sign and police tape over my office. Just, I won't even let yeah. you in my door because I don't want to hear about it, right? <laughs> you've, got, you've got all flavors. The good news is uh, we are well past the half point where uh, the, in, the innovators are starting to actually deploy and show results. The yeah. deer in the headlights are starting to innovate and these folks are at least opening up the door and taking down some Is there tape. pressure on the agency side now? A lot of agencies charge a lot of monthly billings for these clients and it's yeah. been the old school thing and something trying to be aggressive and do more services. Have you seen with the Sizen Cloud and the things that you're doing that you're enabling those agencies to be more productive? Yes. Are the clients putting pressure on those agencies to deliver yeah. more value? Talk about the agency and that, dynamic. And that, that's also a, a, a virtuous cycle too, right? Um, that, that cycle goes from, it's a bell curve. At the beginning of the bell curve, Customers have no clue about the communications. They go to their agencies, right, for advice, right? So you have to educate the agencies on how to say nice things about you, right? By the time you're at the bell curve, the, 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 the clients know about the tech or have adopted the deck, and the agencies realize, oh, I can monetize the hell out of this. They need strategy and services and content and creative and campaign, right? I can, you know, this is yet another good old fashioned uh, High truism. gross profit. <laughs> a buck for the tech means yeah. six bucks for me as a service agency, right? Yeah. At the bottom over here, and I'll never forget this when I, we did our modern marketing experiences, uh, you know, Eric, uh, the CMO of Clorox said, hey, to all you agencies out there, now that we're mature, you know, we choose our agency based on their fluency around our, te our tech stack. So it goes that violently yeah. and therefore the agencies really do need to you know, try to get fluent. And the ones that do uh, really reap rewards because there is a blatant amount of need as the line of business yeah. customer tries to get from here to here, and the agency is the is the very first place that that customer is going to go so to. So basically, so the, the customer has first right of refusal to go provide these services and monetize them. So the agency has to keep up, basically. With the, they with the, certainly do because the game gets changed by speed is accelerated, yep. values created. Yep. If they keep none of the running shoes on, if they, they keep up and they stay fluent, then they're going to be great. Yeah, and then uh, what, the last thing back on the things we we we've kind of hit this. This is one of those magic points I've been talking about for twenty years. Um, when the CFO or the CEO or the CMO walk down to the CCO's office and say, where are we on this? Because <laughs> it's out in the wild now, yeah. right? There are over 1,200 big brands doing this measurement, decision ID, <laughs> Comstack stuff. It's getting written about, right, good old fashioned media, right? 
customer says, wow, I couldn't do this for 50 years. Now I am, and look what I just did to my comms program, right? That gets read, right? We're, world's the same place as it always has yeah. been. You and I read that, we go down to our comms department and say, wow, I didn't know that was possible. Where are we on this? So the where are we on this wave is coming to communications, yeah. which is an accelerant. It's an accountability. Get a now it's accountability, yeah. and, and therefore the urgency to get fluent and yeah. change. So now they're hiring up quant chunks and operations and statisticians and database people just like the marketers did, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the anatomy of a communications department is starting to look half science, half art, just like happened in marketing, yeah. whereas before, before that, it was 95% uh, you know, si uh, art and uh, just 5% five, five science, but it's getting to be 50-50 now. Do you have any competition? We have, just like always, right? Um, you guys pretty much have a pretty much PR news wire, a lot of, a lot of big elements there. We do, there. yeah. Got a good you, you know, kind of like, I'll, but it's just an example. You know, even though, it, even though uh, Marketo is part of Adobe, giant, and Eloqua is part of uh, Oracle, giant, and Pardot, is uh, part of Salesforce. You know, you got three Goliaths in marketing automation. Yeah. HubSpot's still sticking around. You know, pure play, marketing automation, right? Uh, you could just pick your right CRM giants. Microsoft and Salesforce have eaten the world. Zendesk's still kicking around. Yeah. It's own little pure play. That 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 equivalent you know, exists. Um, I have I have nobody that's even one fifth as big as I am. Yeah. Uh, or as global or as complete. But I do have some small, point specific solution providers. Uh, they're still hanging out there, always well. The thing, well. well, the thing is, one, first of you are a great leader. You've seen the movie on the marketing tech side. You've got um, waves of experience under your belt. But I think what's interesting is, is that like the web 1.0, having websites and web pages, web 2.0, yeah. and social networks, that was about the first generation. Yeah. Serve information, create affiliate programs, all kind of coded tracking, and you mentioned all that, I oversimplified it, but you get the idea. Yep. Now, every company needs a new, new capability. That's right. They need to stand up media infrastructure. They do. And what does that mean? They got to throw out podcasts, they got to take their content, put them into multiple channels. Yeah. That's a comms function. It is. That, so now comms is becoming the new CMO-like capability yep. in this earned channel. So your cloud becomes that yeah. provisioning entity right. for companies mm -hmm. to stand up capabilities without yep. waiting. Is that the vision? You, you, you've nailed it. And that is one of the key reasons why you have to have a tech stack, right? That's, that's, a, that's a spot on one, a, another one. You know, when I, back in early in my career, the 20 influencers that mattered, they were all newspaper reporters or TV folks, right? There was only 20 of them. I had a Rolodex. I could take each one of them out for a three martini lunch. They'd write something good about me, right? <laughs> now, I wish it was that easy uh, now. Right, <laughs> now you have thousands of influencers yeah. across 52 channels and they change in real time and they're global in nature. It's another example of where, well, if you don't automate that with tech, right? Yeah, and oh, by the way, if you, left you, if you send out digital content, they talk back to you in real time. Yeah. You have to actually not only do influencer identification, outreach, and, and curation, you've got to do real time engagement. There's no agility. Right? There's none. Zero agility. None. Exactly. There's no like <laughs> DevOps mindset in there and, at all. And then the speed with which it's no longer okay for comms to call the agency and say, give me a clipbook. I got to get it to my CEO by Friday, right? That whole start the clipbook on Tuesday, I got to have the clipbook, the physical clipbook you yeah. know, on the CEO as an example, right? Nope, if I'm not basically streaming my senior executives in real time, yeah. curated and analyzed as to what's important and what it means. I can't do that without a tech stack. Well, too. Andy so Cunningham was on the This whole thing has been forced yeah. to get modernized by cloud technology transformation. Andy you Cunningham, a, job a legend it. in the comms business who, who did all Steve Jobs comms, legend. She basically said on theCUBE, it's not about waiting for the clips to create the clipbook. Create your own clipbook yeah. and get it out there, yeah. then evaluate and engage. Yeah. This is yeah. the new, Command and control yeah. with digital assets. Now it's now it's the now it's become the real time curated feed that never stops. Or it sure as hell better not. <laughs> All right, well, comms is in trouble if it does. Well, this is a great yeah. topic. I'd like to have you in this again. I, I can go deep on this. So this is I think a really important shift, sure. and you guys are only ones that are on it at this level. And I don't think the Salesforce and and the Adobe's yet are. I don't think they're nimble enough to go after this wave. I think they're they're stuck on their wave and they're making a lot of money. Yeah, you know, John, they're you know paid media and owned media. That's right. The Google marketing cloud, the SAP marketing cloud, Adobe, Oracle, Salesforce marketing clouds. They don't do anything in earned. Nothing. Um, this is one of the reasons I jumped because I knew this needed to happen. Mm -hmm. But you, you know, they're also chasing much bigger pots of money, right? Marketing and advertising is still a lot more money. We're working on it to grow the grow the pie for comms. But bottom line is they're chasing the big markets, as I was at Oracle. 
and they're still pretty much in a violent arms race against each other. Yeah. You know, like Salesforce is still way more focused on what Adobe's doing. Yeah. Uh, than what, You're just on you a know, different way. So you, we're just over here yeah, on a big doing way. this, <laughs> building a billion dollar cloud leader um, <laughs> that is mission critical to every one of their customers and they're going to end up being some pretty important partners to us because they've been too focused on the big arms race yeah. against each other in paid and owned and have not had the luxury to even go here. Well, I think this wave that you're on is going to be really big. I think they don't yet see it, in my yeah. opinion, or can't get there with the right surfboard, to use the surfing analogy. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a big wave. Thanks for sharing your insights. Absolutely. While you're here, get the plug in for Sizen. What's going on? What's next? What's the big momentum? Get to put the plug in for the company. What are you guys going to do? Plug in for the company. Uh, the company has acquired a couple of companies in January, you might see, uh, one of which is uh, Falcon, and basically Falcon is one of the big four in the land of Hootsuite, Sprinkler, right, Spreadfast. So, uh, you know, cloud companies do this, right? Uh, Adobe has Creative Cloud, Document Cloud, Marketing Cloud, right? Salesforce has Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, Marketing Cloud, right? Um, Cision has just become a multi-cloud company. We now have the Cision Social Cloud and the Cision Communications Cloud. And we're going to go grab a couple hundred million dollars of stuff away from Sprinkler, Hootsuite, and collapse social right. into this, right? Because most of social is earned, you know, as yeah. well. Yeah. So look for, look, for, uh, look for a wing spread, right, into another adjacent market. I think that's number one. Um, and then look for publishing of the data. That's probably going to be the most exciting thing because we just talked about, again, our metrics and capabilities you couldn't buy. But, you know, little, little teaser. If we can, say, in two months, well, here's the average click-through on a Google ad, a YouTube ad, a banner ad. Let me show it to you for a blog, a press release, an article, right? Apples to apples, right? Here's the conversion rate. Here's the, right, if I can, if I can literally start becoming almost like an e-marketer publisher yeah. on what happens when people read earned. Uh, right, uh, there's going to be some unbelievable uh, stats, yeah. uh, and, uh, and and they're going to be incredibly telling, and it's going to drive that. Where are we on that? <laughs> well, so I this is going to be the year. It's a new digital advertising CEO, format. It's yeah. a new format. That's exactly right. It's a new digital advertising format, and and it's one when the CEO understands that he or she can have it for earned now, the way he's had it for marketing advertising, that little conversation walking down the hall, in thousands of companies, <laughs> yeah. where the CCO or the VP of PR looks up and the CEO's yeah. going, where are we on that? Um, that's the year that this, that, that inflection yeah. uh, flip switches, which Every I'm excited about. siloed function is now horizontally right. connected with data, right. now measured, fully instrumented. Yep. The value will be there. Yep. And whoever can yep. bring the value gets the budget. That's, right. that's mm -hmm. the new model. Kevin yep. Ackroyd, CEO of Cizen, changing the game and the shift around the chief communication officer and how that is becoming more tech savvy really disrupting the business by measuring earned media, a big wave that's coming. Of course, it's early, but it's going to be a big one. Kevin, thanks for coming yeah, on. Likewise, John, thank it's you. It's a CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching. Thanks, John.